Welcome to Pizza Time, a 30 year celebration of Teenage Mutant Ninja, Tur Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle video games. Anyway, we're going to start with Turtles Arcade. Um, in this game, you death abuse, and so we're going to start with a lot of lives. And um, is there a countdown um, for when to start the time? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, if it's just verbal countdown, we'll just do it in five, four, three, two, one. Peep, 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 pizza time. Okay, so here we have Donatello, the uh, youngest of the brothers. And uh, anyway, he's really good in this game because he has great range. So we're going to take advantage of that um, by basically using special attacks the whole game and some intentional and unintentional deaths to lower the difficulty. So that being said, we're going we're gonna to let this Rodney take us down and, uh, and then we're going we're gonna to get this party started. Here we go, going into the apartment. Um, I'm trying to think if there's like anything else really to know besides special attacks really do a lot of damage and some other little things. Um, also, yeah, you're gonna see a lot of jab. We're gonna have, we're gonna be doing jab parties. Hopefully that this goes well. Um, this guy, uh, he will he will destroy your credits if you don't do this setup right. I, of course, dropped one rep of, and uh, we might take two deaths here on purpose now. No. All right. And uh, anyway, yeah. So yeah, here we have it. Uh, and now Shredder has taken April O'Neil, and uh, well, we're gonna go and save her, except that. Saving her a couple of days ago in this game, for the last almost 30 years, uh, this game was released on July 5th, 1989, so this game is very close to 30 years old, so give it up to this game for looking so good, uh, and still holding up, at least to me, and, uh, and being a just timeless classic, and anyway, so for the entire history of this game, until the last couple of days, uh, there, this was a pretty normal level. You fought a lot of enemies, and you killed a bunch of stuff, and then you went down to the bottom there, and then in different versions of the NES game, there's some interesting uh, posters, but today we're going to do a little thing called the Josie Skip, and, uh, well, yeah, this is it. So, basically, um, we're going to... We're gonna skip a lot of this level. We're gonna skip a lot of enemies. Um, this did not take any time to practice, so shout outs to Josie for finding this. And um, we're in there. So, yeah, basically, you hug that right wall, and then you go all the way to the left, and you hold down left, and. Um... <laughs> okay. Um, you hold down left, and then you start doing attacks. And basically, for some reason or another, that lets you teleport through that level. Um, so, um, yeah, that wasn't in the part of the game plan until the last couple days. So again, yeah, thank you, Josie, for that skip. Um, um, let's see. Okay, so in this rule, in this stage, general rule of thumb is. Um, stay on the on the top side of those things um, because there's there are missiles that uh, that go into the bottom uh, and the longer you're down there the more that they'll fire so you don't want to well, at least a certain point in the level you want to stop uh, hanging out down there um, I still go down there because going down there to get some of the quick kills is it's it's rewarding I don't know if it's actually good or not but it is so I'm going to try and go for it here. And against better judgment, things could have been better. But, um, anyway, that's just the uh, that's just my way of dealing with the screen. Because 
the human or the the foot soldiers, uh, they can just even any like regular ones, like they'll just force a knockdown, and that could just be it. So anyway, here we have Baxter. We're gonna set up a kill spot, and hopefully um, we don't. Now we did take damage. I didn't set it up right. Okay. okay so now it should be good. Anyway, so if you get um at the bottom of the uh, um, of the little ledge there in the sewer, um, basically the um, none of the Mausers can hit you because of the way that planning works. So we take advantage of it there a little bit and uh, and make it so that Baxter doesn't really pose a problem as long as you get the set um, efficiently. Um, so anyway. Um, so interactables are pretty interesting in this game, or in this stage. Um, there's a lot of them. You can use them to some good degree, but relying on the AI to do stuff that you want sometimes can be very um, problematic. And um, yeah, so you use them sometimes, but usually just a risk. So usually I try and go for a quick kill setup here, but. I didn't realize that the foot soldier had made it onto the screen. So, um, yeah, so we're doing a little bit of a backup strat. And I guess apparently we're going to try and kill Rocksteady first. Usually if you don't get the double quick kill set up, um, you go for Bebop first because he's the easier of the two to deal with. And then you can set up the, um, the knockdown loop on the other one. But if you set it up properly, you just get them both in the knockdown loop at the beginning, but again, sometimes uh, yeah, you have to just make sure that a straight foot soldier is not getting ready to get a hold of you. So I'd say that overall, in a lot of ways, this level is really the level in the speedrun um, that uh, is the make or break stage. Uh, it's, it's pretty early, it's early enough in the run um, but basically, there's just so much to deal with. You have, you've got those missile dudes, um, those foot soldiers that are carrying the missiles. Um, among other things, you have like you've got vehicles going in multiple directions. You've got cars, you've got bikes, um, and of course, you have more than our fair share of roadkill Rodney. So, as much as this character was only in one episode of the 10 seasons worth of the cartoon show. Um, in this game and beyond, uh, there are a lot of roadkill rodents. And this one is uh, notorious for uh, hitting with lasers and um, uh, anti-airing you with uh, the whip even. And um, yeah, just ruining a lot of uh, credits at the laundromat or your local arcade. Um, so, um, yeah, so hopefully we none of them get out of hand. It didn't seem like it was too bad there. Um, so, yeah, like I said, and a lot of it is still the same thing. Um, you know, we're just doing a basic, we're doing basic groupings, but we're going to try and hope those Rodneys don't get too out of hand. And we're going to hope that, yeah. Some of these, some of these uh, foot soldiers, these knife foot soldiers, they can start wandering um, and sometimes wander towards the top of the screen, and uh, they they can be a, they can really eat up a lot of time. Yeah, but that being said, that went pretty well. All right, and here we go. I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna check out the uh, see what's going on. Actually, we're gonna we're gonna take a couple of intentional deaths. Oh, and I'll explain that. So in this game, um, basically, this game was designed to, to you and uh, three of your buddies, uh, um, all of your uh, all of your quarters at the arcade. Um, and uh, one of the things that was implemented in this game was is that there is a scaling difficulty depending on how many turtles there are. So there are actually more enemies um, and in specific bosses. Um, more going on with them, uh, depending on the difficulty. Now luckily, or unluckily depending on how you look at it, you can uh, 
<laughs> you can die intentionally or unintentionally, and the difficulty of the game will lower itself. So, um, of course, this is speedrun, so we're going to take advantage of it a little bit, um, even though I just dodged the foot soldiers the whole time there instead of taking any intentional deaths. Um, but I think that the, I think my difficulty is, it's already low enough, so it shouldn't make a difference. Um, so, um, yeah, either way, uh, so, yeah, basically, yeah, the more enemies that there are, or the more, uh, turtles there are, the more enemies that there will be, and the less deaths that you have, the more enemies that there will be. So, in this, yeah, we're using one turtle, and, uh, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna make sure that we take a couple of deaths, and even in the first level, we make sure that we take at least one death, just because it will scale the difficulty of the um, of the street um, down just enough in the beginning uh, to get ready for uh, get ready for the skip. All right, anyway, here we go. So we're gonna start fighting um, interdimensional beings, and by that I mean um, some of the uh, stone. Uh, Warriors. Um, yeah, Trag and Granitor are are here to defend parts of this game. And uh, anyway, so we're gonna see how 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 we deal with them. Um, yeah. Okay. So th for this setup, uh, you, you basically just want to hit as many of these little drones as they pop out the door as possible, and then. Hope that you can get a get the others in a, in a timely manner. That one went pretty well. Definitely not too upset about that. And for these guys, we're gonna just roll to the top. We're gonna run. Oh, there's a second pizza for whatever reason. All right. Um, this guy is kind of a problem. Um, he's got fire. He can stomp the ground. Um, he's really rude. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna probably die to him again, uh, but again, not a big deal. It's gonna make sure that the Technodrome stays in check. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna basically just do this little wiggle on him. We're gonna just we're gonna just stutter step him, um, and we're gonna make sure that we're like on like the lower half of his hurt box, um, basically so that you don't get hit by that fire. Um, but setting it up sometimes going in uh, can be a little bit. Um, finicky. And then we're going to cross him back up with a little dive kick and try and keep him stun locked. He's going to be hurting. Um, Alright, and um, all right, we, we did it. We saved Master Splinter. Thank you, my turtles. And uh, from the Season 1 of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, there it is! The Technodrome! Um, so yeah, uh, so we've got some yeah, some more lasers, more wall lasers. Uh, there's a couple of other um, traps that are introduced into this. And, um, uh, yeah, so one thing about this game is that it doesn't really do vertical sections very well. So, um, we're also going to take advantage of, um, well, depending on how things go. We might, we may or may not take advantage of there being a vertical section in this stage. Um, if the, uh... It's like, like another Rodney. Sometimes we'll we'll make it to the elevator with you, and you'll see him walk off the top. So we didn't get to see that, so I'm sorry. Um, and oh yeah, again, yeah, we're gonna lower the difficulty by uh, taking death. So even on the even here, you can take one extra one extra death just to just to make sure. And if you want, it'll you can, you can use it to help. Like you can use that uh, pizza uh, later instead of to pre preserve a life. So yeah, general rule of thumb in this level is figure out a good way to deal with either some of the foot soldiers or get some hits on the um, Rodneys if you can. Whoops. So my I try to generally just take care of the. Um, <laughs> of the foot soldiers first, and then start um, walking across the stage with the, the Rodneys and just doing little dash attacks and stuff. Um, so anyway, so here we go. Um, this guy, uh, this rock soldier, um, uh, 
uh, Trag. Not as big a deal as Granitor. Um, of course, uh, right now I am getting hit by his rockets, of course, but um, he's got a little bit less of uh, dangerous hurt boxes. Um, he's a little bit less aggressive. Now, you have a little bit, well, similarly less room to work with, and you, you do have a stage hazard with the, the laser beams, but yeah, like I said, keeping him in sunlight is pretty simple. And again, yeah, we're going to use the stunlock basically for the last two bosses, and um, here we have it. First, uh, you know, Krang. And, uh, yeah, he's invincible, in case you didn't know. Except not to this. Um, I mean, he is, but this suit that he's wearing is not so invincible to this. Yeah, so again, we have basically the same thing. We're going to just shimmy, and then we're going to dive kick right back across his head, and... Yeah, if it all goes well, he's not going to go very far down. And we're not going to get kicked to the walls or anything. And, um... Yeah, oh gosh. I did get lasered, though, so... Yeah, and for most of these bosses, yeah, if you if you use Donnie's bow staff and hit them somewhere around their knees, um, and on, like, the lower half of their uh, hitboxes, you'll be able to take care of a lot of the bosses much easier. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, here it is. Here's Shredder. Uh, first incarnation of Shredder. Like I said, when you play with multiple people, um, the, di the, s the difficulty scales. And for this boss, that means that there are at least there's always at least one more Shredder than there are turtles. So because there's two, there's one turtle here. There are two Shredders, all the way up to you know four turtles, and there being five Shredders. Now the gimmick is is that only one of the shredders is real, so you, you have to find him, and basically you can knock off his helmet, and when you knock off his helmet, um, you either know instantly that if it happens within, within a couple of hits, that it's not the real shredder, but if he keeps his helmet on, like this one, um, you know that it's, you know, like I know that this is the real shredder, so I'm really doing damage to him. Okay, so now the other one won't be able to use his magic attack. Uh, his de-evolution game. So, um, here we go. And uh, time will be as soon as we see the Tekken drum in 3, 2, 1, and time. And, uh... Alright, well, cool. Um, yeah, that was, that was a pretty good one. Um, yeah, so that's uh, Turtles, uh, Turtles Arcade. Yeah, released in July 5th, 1989. Uh, the beginning of uh, the beat-em-up series that um, tons of uh, the fans and grew up with, and uh, this one uh, started it off right, you know, as far as, uh, you know, as the beat-em-ups go, and uh, and still holds up, it's still a lot of fun, it's, you know, it's a still poor translation, but pretty, pretty great. Um, yeah, so thanks everyone for uh, the GG's on uh, Speed Gaming 2, and thanks for having us here for... Uh, Pizza Time, a celebration of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles featuring Donatello, Michelangelo, Raphael, and Leonardo, your heroes. Um, so, uh, yeah, that being said, the uh, other turtles, uh, Mikey and Leo in this game, they have uh, just slightly shorter range on their special attack and basic attack, so that's pretty much no good for most situations. Now, Raphael's special is interesting because he does a little rollout and uh, a slide kick, and it uh, it's great for movement and covering space and some stuff, but it makes uh, fighting Baxter, among some other things, more problematic. Um, and... Um, yeah, um, yeah. Short uh, list of shoutouts. Thanks to all the um, people in the Turtles community um, for this game, uh, specifically Elrock, uh, helping me uh, get a better idea of some of the things going on. Again, um, um, and. Uh, yeah, thanks everyone for showing up and enjoying the uh, Turtles Arcade. Um.